Welcome back to That Change Show. I'm Jason Little, your host, and this week's episode is about what to do when your approach for change doesn't work anymore. Hey there, welcome to episode four of That Change Show, a weekly 15-minute show where I bring in questions from lean coffees and workshops and maybe some interesting conundrums online that people find themselves in. So before I get started, there are a couple of ways you can catch these episodes. You can head over to leanchange.tv and find the video versions and all the archives of all of our shows. Obviously, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can hit that subscribe button. You'll get notified when new episodes come out. And in your favorite podcast application, you can go to thatchangeshow.com and you can find all of our episodes there as well. All right, so let's get into this week's episode. What do you do when the approach that you're taking for change doesn't work anymore? And I've had this question a bunch of times over the years, and it's usually brought on in a very similar way, no matter what country I go to or size of client it is we use method X or we use this approach for change and we really suck at change. We wanna use your framework or uh, more modern ideas and tools and practices to augment that framework. But it always comes from one dimension of just the framework. Now, it's interesting that usually the follow-on conversation is, well, we're all trained on method X. We all love it. It's the greatest thing ever. It's best of breed. It's best practice, but it doesn't work. So now we have to get into little more complex topics because if you looked at any change framework on the outside and on the surface, they're all pretty similar in their design. Um, the intention underneath might obviously be a little bit different, but you could pretty much exchange any of the more traditional frameworks with each other and nothing would be different at all. They're very similar. So when we go to that intention first, there's a few things that we need to look at. Number one, is it our perspective do we just think that change isn't working because the picture we've painted in our head is not the picture we see unfolding in reality? And this is common because if you're a dedicated change agent, whether you're an agile coach, whether you're a change manager, or you're on a dedicated change team inside an organization, 100% of your thinking is about that change. Day in and day out, reading articles, posting questions on LinkedIn when you're stuck with things, looking at different frameworks and diagrams and methods and tools and things you can use, but you're totally consumed with this. Whereas the people affected by the change, maybe it's 1% of what is on the top of the thinking part of their brain. Maybe it's zero, maybe it's 10%, but it's not even close to where our level of thinking and attention is. So for them, it's, you know, can you go away and just let me get the stuff done for our customers? So we might just think that the change isn't working because those people won't do it. And, and that picture of reality doesn't match the picture I've painted in my head. Here's an interesting story about that perception. So I was working in an organization where we were doing um, daily standups with, I don't know, 30 to 40 people three times a week at a portfolio level. And it got to a point where that daily standup was very, very dull and boring. And I have a habit of inventing problems just so I have something to do and I have something to take action on. And uh, it, it took me a long time to develop triggers for that. So when I got to that point in this organization, um, this was when we were in person and, and uh, uh, we had uh, sticky note walls. And I put a flip chart paper up at the beginning of the meeting and I said, um, we just wanna do a check and see if this is still valuable for everybody. So on your way out, on the slider from left to right, how valuable is this from zero to 10? And that's it. You can leave a comment there if you want. We talked about it in the next standup and basically it was all my perception. I invented a problem that didn't exist because I was bored. So when we talk about we're bad at change, the changes don't stick, our framework doesn't work anymore, explore your own perspective and your biases. What is leading you to believe that that's the case? And more importantly, how can you validate that's actually the right reason? So that first idea can be very difficult because again, we're, we're told, hey, we have to think outside the box, we have to challenge our own beliefs, but we can't really do that. That's, we need an outside perspective to be able 
to do that. And that leads me into the second tip, which maybe it's a little more concrete. There's an exercise you can do with your change team when you're thinking about wanting a new framework or you feel stuck that the way you're approaching change isn't working. And this is to do a storytelling session. And basically you wanna start from a place of, hmm, okay, we've decided we want a new approach for change because the way we do change doesn't work. First, let's honor the past. Let's talk about, okay, how did we do change in the past? What kind of changes did we work on? What happened? What did we like about it? And if we had to go back in time and do it again, what could we do differently? Then let's just assume that conversation leads towards, yes, it is the tool or the framework that uh, we need to either augment or displace. The next thing is, how can we accept that for an element? How can we decide, okay, we are going to go down the road of replacing or augmenting that with a new set of tools and practices. Now, the dangerous part in that is tools and practices are just one of multiple dimensions for how change is unfolding in your organizations. You can check out episode one of that change show where I talk about that, but it's not just so much the tools and the framework, but if we've accepted the fact that from the first conversation, we need to go in that route, all right, let's accept that for an element and let's consciously choose to take action on that. So now the third is, what are we prepared to do about it? This is really a it depends answer depending on the size of your organization because there are some organizations that have approached me to say, well, the people at the top uh, want to do change differently. So they drop the change through the hole in the floor and we're left kind of scrambling to, to pick up the pieces to create something and then get buy-in that yes, it's okay that we go and do change this way. So that's one way. Then you can kind of argue, maybe that's busy work. Maybe the way we're doing change is actually working, but there's a different problem. So we have to get into what is the actual problem we're trying to solve? Um, it could be maybe that we have too much change. Maybe there's too much friction for some of the changes that we're doing. Maybe the timing is off. There's a whole bunch of different factors that we need to explore. So if we go through the storytelling exercise, we can honor the past, we can accept the foreign element, and then we can decide what to do. And the last piece is, if we do choose to do something different, let's not get rid of the entire thing, or let's not just add a bunch of tools to it. Let's pick one thing we can do differently on one project or you know, one thin slice across our change portfolio, and let's try an experiment for a month. Maybe every week we check in on this experiment for how it's going. And a recent one I did was a move away from big stakeholder maps and big charters to a co-created canvas. Now, uh, when you get to the end of that experiment, and end is a difficult word because they kind of, uh, there is no natural ending point to these experiments or changes like there is with say, applying an iterative approach to software development. Uh, now we wanna see, did this make a dent? So given uh, our conversation from our storytelling session, we agreed on these actions, we're gonna try these experiments. Did it make a dent? What got better? What got worse? Do we wanna keep going or do we wanna stop or do we want to pivot or you know, change it a little bit for the next experiment? So if we get into this idea of using small experiments to change how we do change, we're actually using that approach on ourselves so we can feel what it's like now when we want other people in the organization to change or if we're working on a digital transformation, agile transformation or any change project, we can start to bring that small experimentation attitude because remember, we're focused 100% on the change. People in the organization, eh, not so much. So we might wanna say, hey, this is exactly how we change the way that we do work. Let's try and help you with that. All right, so the last tip before I get into the wrap up, and this is something I've used a number of times over the years, and I call it the George Costanza method. And this is basically do the opposite. So if you're a Seinfeld fan, or uh, even if you've never seen the show actually, there's an episode where one of the characters, life isn't really going the way that he wanted it to, so he says, you know what, I'm gonna ignore my instincts and I'm gonna do the opposite, and everything goes smoothly and fantastic for the rest of the episode. So. Take the George Costanza approach. I would argue that a lot of large organizations go through the cycle every 12 to 18 months where they are updating their best practices framework. Um, so if that's our pattern, how many times have we done this? 
I usually do this with agile transformations because now that they've been around for so long, I, I talk to organizations about, well, how many times have you done this before? What have you done? What worked, what didn't? What do you wanna try differently this time? So it's almost like a retrospecting your way through complex change. Do the same thing. When the gut reaction says we need to get rid of that framework and we need to bring a new one in, let's go through a, a different approach and let's try to do the opposite. Now, what would be the opposite? So the opposite would be, hmm, maybe we try one experiment. Uh, maybe we do nothing. Maybe we go and try to validate with the people that we are inflicting change on how has it been perceived over the last number of changes? Has it been working well for you? Has it been disruptive? But it's not to just assume because we think the change framework is the problem, we gotta get a new one. We have to go and validate that by doing the opposite of what, how we normally react to that situation. So just to wrap up this episode, the change framework is one of four dimensions. And again, if you listen to the first episode, you can find those other three, but it's more complicated than just to say that it's because of these tools and these frameworks, that's why change isn't working. So the last thing I'm gonna say about that is you will see this in the Agile space. You'll see people talking about Jira and tools and how um, it, it's perceived that Agile people are very anti-tool and some are, but really when you dig a little bit deeper, it's because we see that the tools tend to dictate the behavior. So if your framework has these steps in it, you might feel like you are locked into having to do those steps because if something goes wrong and you didn't follow one of the steps, that's when we get in trouble in our organizations. Well, did you follow the process? Well, no, it didn't make sense for this scenario. Just follow the process. That's why we have this best practice. And uh, this is why we see that stance um, from the Agile community a lot is because creating complex workflow and software uh, development lifecycle management tools dictates the behavior. I've seen cases where there's complicated workflow from you know, the idea to writing the requirements, writing code, doing code reviews, whatever the workflow is. And I've seen cases where People know what to do, but the status of the ticket in the tool is not at that state, so they don't take action on it. So that's the challenge, is that the tool is driving the behavior. So I guess that actually is a fourth thing that you can talk about is, are we deriving our behavior as change agents from the prescriptiveness of this tool? And maybe that's the problem. So hopefully these four things will give you a way to think about it differently when you kind of come to the conclusion that the way we do change sucks because, spoiler alert, everywhere I go, everybody says the same thing. People talk about who does it better in, our, in, in the world because our country is so far behind. I talked about this in the last episode. Or what are some companies that are great at change because we really suck at it and the behaviors don't stick. We all have that perception. So these are hopefully four things that can give you a bit of a different perspective to figure out how to get yourself unstuck when you think it's the change framework that's causing the problem. So remember to hit like and subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. And again, head over to leanchange.tv for all of the episodes or check it out in your favorite podcast application. I'm your host, Jason Little, and I will see you on the next episode.